Welcome back. So, uh, in the third session of Socket Programming in C, we will be covering representation of internet addresses in Socket Programming. Before starting the session number three, uh, I want to ask you a quick question from the previous slide. Uh, which one is the correct uh, set of parameters for socket creation for this socket function call? Website, domain type protocol, tacos, or Sun Heng Min? I'm going to give you some time so you can pause the video and try to find the correct one. And the correct answer is, of course, the second option socket that contains the domain, the type, and the protocol itself. Of course, not Sun Heng Min. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, from the five fundamentals from the first and second laboratory sessions, um, the logical uh, sequence of um, socket creation was first creating the socket itself uh, by making this function call, right? And then uh, binding that uh, created socket in, into some port, into some address, and then listening on the server side and from the client side on another device connecting to that address. So there were just five steps, socket creation, binding and uh, listening, accepting connection and connecting. First four steps were uh, the actions of the server device, server part. And the last one was uh, the function call, uh, the connect function call was made by the TCP client. Um, I'm just covering it one more time so that you wouldn't forget the logic behind uh, the details that we'll be covering in the ne next laboratory sessions. Because what we'll be doing from now on is we'll be diving into details on each part, each specific part. And uh, today's session is about representation of address inside the first step, socket creation. Um, all right, uh, internet address plus port that gives us the socket. Now we have to understand uh, how internet address is represented in devices. And of course, I believe you have seen the IP addresses. They look like 192.168.12, or it can be any other IP address. For example, my computer's IP address is. Um, I'm not going to give you my IP address because some of you might be a hacker and just hack into my computer. Of course, that was also a joke. So, um, what is internet address? Informally speaking, internet address of a device is just like uh, a person's phone number. For example, for example, um, I will bring an equivalent example uh, from about phone numbers and then I will explain that example uh, in uh, with regard to IP address. First, a phone number can be split into country code, area code and unique identifier of a SIM card. Correct? Let's try to just uh, write one phone number, one Korean phone number and then try to understand what are the uh, country code, area code. Of course you know it but still I'm, I'm going to be covering one more time. Plus 82, 32, um, I'm not sure about the rest. Let's say 134, 134. So, why do I put a space here? Of course, you know it because the first part gives us plus 82 that gives South Korea, then 32 gives us Incheon, right? If you don't believe, then you can open just South Korean phone numbers. South Korean phone number. Oh, good. Okay. And then you can open just Wikipedia page and click this area code and you'll see that 032 stands for Incheon and 02 is Seoul, 31 and so on, etc. So that one gives us the country code plus area code. And then this uh, the continuation of the phone number gives us the unique identifier. And the combination of uh, the country code and unique identifier gives uh, an access to, to a specific person's device. Or uh, let's say just gives us direct access 
to a specific person's device. So um, just like in this case, just like in this case, the IP address that we saw, for example, here, 192.168.12, can also be split into logical two parts, just like here, like country code and unique identifier. Oh, let, let me just cover the formal uh, explanation of internet address as well. So formally speaking, an internet protocol address, which is IP address, is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network that uses internet protocol for communication. And you can see here, it's just giving an example here, it's saying each uh, IP address is split into two parts. And this, uh, don't worry about this class stuff, it's like just um, not very complex that we'll be covering in the next uh, slide. So it's split into network ID and host ID. Here, let's just take one uh, sample IP address. Let's say one, two, three, one, two, three, and then, okay, two, one, three, uh, two, three, one, and one, three, two. So let's say this is an IP address. Also, this IP address can be split into, say, not country code and area code, of course, but network ID. This looks saying uh, every person inside Incheon are connected uh, is are connected into one network. That's how we can understand. Um, so this, just as an example, it's not always this part being a network ID, but just in this case, I will explain like this one is the network ID, and uh, the rest is the host ID, and that gives us uh, a direct access to a specific device it just simply if we say uh, phone oh my god it's just uh, curly sorry uh, phone and this one will give us direct access to specific device so if you want to talk to another device then you have to specify an address that contains the network ID and the host ID and in the phone example, uh, in the phone number example, if you want to uh, contact a uh, direct contact, it's a bad word. Okay, direct. If you want to directly contact a phone, then you have to specify the country code and uh, the unique identifier. All right. So now, uh, now that we know that IP addresses are also logically split into two parts. Uh, one of them is which uh, network ID and then the second is host ID. Now let's dive in into details of how they are split and what are these class A, B, C, and what is all this? Let's try to understand it first. Okay, so when you're trying to represent an address, then you'll be ending up with two options only. One of them is classful addressing and second is classless. In classful addressing, the uh, network ID and host ID are split uh, according to rules uh, for each uh, that are different for each class. The, the class are split like A, B, C, D, E, and uh, the most commonly used ones are A, B, C because D and E are specific purpose. And uh, A, B, and C, if you just Google uh, internet uh, class, okay, google.com. Less full addressing and open up images, then you, what you will see is uh, like this kind of representation. Uh, this is not very explanatory. Oh, here, uh, I just copied that image from here. I just stole that image. Now, that, now you know where I took it from. All right, so, okay, this is a very good one, but this is not uh, clear. This is also not clear. All right. I hope you can see this. So here you can see that uh, the IP address was uh, is split into four parts, four bytes, saying, and uh, class A takes up the first uh, byte. The first byte contains eight bits, eight ones and zeros. And the first byte that, that is yellow is considered as a network address. And then the rest three bytes 
are representing the uh, host ID. So here I split that IP address like uh, the IP address was like this, right? 213. This was the original IP address, and then I split it like this. And now if you take a look at uh, the image, then you'll see that uh, class A is taking up the first byte, meaning in class A example, class A example, this wouldn't have been like this, but instead 213 would have been the host ID. And then the 123, the first beginning uh, digits, beginning uh, number, beginning byte, would represent the network ID. And then, uh, okay, where is my explorer? Okay, here. And then in the class B example, we would take the first two bytes as network ID and then the rest as host ID. And so on and so on. And DE are the specific purpose. That's why they don't have uh, network ID and uh, host ID. They're specifically, they are not specified as you can see here. Not defined, not defined. The network bits are not defined. And uh, so you don't have to really care about it, but you will just understand it in the lecture slides. So um, this is an example of uh, classful addressing where the uh, network and hosts are split according to class, according to which class it uh, belongs to. And uh, the classless addressing, inside classless addressing, we don't have all that IP class A, IP class B, IP class C. We only have uh, the full IP address and such thing called CIDR notation. The CIDR notation gives you the IP address itself and at the end it will, give, it will have a slash and then the number of bits that 16 gives us. 16 bits are used as a network address. What does that mean? That means that uh, the first uh, 8 bytes and then the second 8 and uh, the first 8 bits and then the second 8 bits which gives us 16 bits are considered as network address that's why we have a subnet mask of 255 in the first two if in the first two bytes in the first two octets and actually subnet mask is used to split the network uh, network ID part from the complete IP address part and so uh, this IP address 10.252.0.101 let's write down that IP address 10.252.0 was it 10? oh 101 okay inside the uh, in the class list addressing the network ID would be it was 16. The network ID would be 10.252 and network, not D, okay. And the rest part, 0, 101, would give us the host ID. So basically that's how you can understand inside the uh, class full addressing example, the network ID is split by uh, the class rules. And inside the classless uh, the IP address and network ID are split according to the CIDR notation. All right, so now that we understand uh, how IP addresses work, we can move on to the second part, which is the port number. All right, um, what is a port number? Whenever uh, you create a socket, the socket will connect uh, two processes that might be running in, on two devices, two separate devices, and uh, so you are connecting two devices using a socket, and uh, you are creating a process inside a device that would talk to another process inside another device. So basically, when you just specify the internet address you just said oh I want this device to connect to another device but now you have to specify oh my current process wants to talk to a process of uh, oh, oh, a specific process of that device so by giving the port basically what you're saying is I want to talk to this process inside uh, that device 
So port number is used to deliver a packet to a specific process. And to be even more precise, it's, uh, it is delivered to the process which has created the socket that specified the particular port. And the formal definition is even more boring. A port number is the logical address. Uh, it's not the IP address, logical address. A port number uh, is the logical address of each application process that uses a network or the internet to communicate. A port number uniquely identifies a network-based application on a computer. Uh, I am going to give you an example of what, uh, why we need the port number and what it stands for. Okay, now uh, let's come back and let's come back to an or just to your Internet Explorer and try to open up Google.com. So when you're opening Google.com, uh, what browser is doing is is taking uh, the IP address, it's finding the IP address of the Google uh, server. So now let's uh, try to open CMD and try to find the Google's IP address first, because we're uh, because I have to give an example about what port is. But first, let's find the IP address of Google. So for that, we have to say ping Google.com. That gives us uh, the IP address of Google in South Korea, I believe. Um, so what I did is I just selected this part and copied this IP address. So I just copied. And if you open a new tab and paste that IP address and click enter again, you will be directed to the google.com website. So uh, what we did is we opened this computer's uh, process. We, uh, we not we didn't we didn't open. We made a request. We made a web request to uh, this device's Google server. This uh, this device's uh, web page server. So uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain um, because I haven't explained port yet. So uh, here something hidden is happening. Uh, we are not specifying the port, we're just saying I want to open whatever this uh, IP address is going to give me on my browser and that browser, uh, that uh, server, this IP address, this device is returning us this page, this Google page and I'm not, I don't understand why it's so big, so zoomed in okay, so uh, let me make it and now uh, let's put uh, this semicolon and specify port number that we want to connect to. So 80 is a default port number for web servers. If you click again, you will again see the Google page opening. And now, if you specify a different, the same IP address but a different port, let's say 81, your browser is not going to be opening anything because the port 81 is not uh, the web page that uh, the server that uh, the, the process that responds to uh, web requests only uh, the process that is running on port process uh, on the port number 80 is going to give us the Google's web page so that's basically how you can understand the server this device can be running multiple other processes and they can be they can have they could have created multiple uh, processes on different ports for example maybe even 8080 nope just 80 yes just 80 or maybe 8000 as well nope only 80 so basically that is how you can understand what port is the Google server has opened uh, the Google web page uh, web server on the port 80 and uh, when you create a socket and specify a port that means you you want to talk to a specific process inside that device All right now let's go ahead and understand uh, take a look at the source code of how to represent internet address in C so the goal is we need to specify an IP address uh, by the way we don't have to worry about the classful class list here and because everything will be handled by the source code itself 
but we have to understand uh, these structures that we'll be working with and uh, we need to set the IP address and the port number uh, that must be matching in, on two uh, ends of that socket both on TCP server and TCP client if TCP server creates a socket uh, on port for example 1234 then client has to connect to the server's IP address plus 1234 uh, port number meaning that sending and receiving sockets must have the same port number okay in order to specify uh, IP addresses and ports, uh, we will be using a structure called uh, sock adder and underscore in, and inner means just internet, and th this means internet socket address, socket address, internet, and SA family. There is also a socket address family part of this uh, structure that is understood like socket address family. and then uh, we have uh, this field as well that's sin underscore uh, that exists has to be specified uh, that depends on the family socket internet blah 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 all right uh, this sin actually can be um, like ipv6 or ipv4 and so we can see that uh, there are these fields like sin family sin port sin address and sin zero and zero is actually handled by the server itself we have, we have to just specify uh, we don't have to specify anything here uh, we don't have to worry about the last field but what we'll be give, you know, doing when creating sockets uh, socket addresses is we have to give the uh, address family and port number and then the address itself all right and then here uh, will be giving that internet address is a field of internet address structure so members of uh, socket address in structure there are four uh, I think I've just explained it here too um, the first element is the address family and it's almost always its address family inet that gives us the uh, IP version 4 uh, address and then uh, the next member is the port number that was just a decimal number that we just sh that I just showed you like in inside the Google's example it was 80 right like this one oh my god where did it go anyway I just lost the IP address of that server so the port number and then we have the uh, address itself um, that must be matching with the address family if you specify IPv6 it must not be containing IPv4 address. If you specify uh, AFI net, that means IPv4, then you can specify uh, IP version 4 address inside to this member. And then, since 0, it doesn't have a special, special meaning and it's not used. And if you want more details, then you can just take a look at this link and you'll get the understanding of what this is. And But, you don't, but you're not going to use it. All right, and here you can see... Uh, how it look how the structure looks like so our goal is to fill uh, in the details of that structure into that structure so where is that uh, ad uh, socket address used where, where is that uh, structure used it is used when binding a socket to uh, a uh, it is used when binding an address to a socket so before binding you have to know uh, we have to create that uh, structure in structure and create uh, an object from that structure where you will be specifying this socket address family and uh, the port number and internet address All right and uh, when representing IP addresses uh, you have to consider uh, the uh, little or big endian uh, byte orders so they're different because uh, in little and big endian uh, the different part is for example in human readable if it's 0001 the value is 0001 then in uh, little or big endian it can change it to the order can change to 1000 it depends on the CPU and in order to not worry about all the byte orders being different on different devices uh, the 
uh, smart people that created the socket programming you see they created this little function called h2on and n2oh so it's difficult to read uh, I will just explain you what is the meaning h2ns means h host host address 2 blah 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 n stands for network s stands for short l stands for long so what you're basically what this means is for example the first function that's called h2ons means stands for I want to convert a short and short is for port number I want to convert uh, this port number a human readable port number into the network ordered number that network ordered number considers the byte order little or big ending it will handle itself and it will give back the uh, converted human readable uh, no converted port number from human readable into network ordered number and it will return that value here and then if you want uh, to read the port number that is coming from the network ordered format into human readable then you have to call this function and this stands for network ordered uh, ad, uh, network ordered port to host that means human readable and then uh, exactly the same thing with long as well but the first uh, two functions were for ports and the second is for IP address the IP address uh, takes up just L long uh, H2 O and L. Why they uh, did long? Long actually is uh, 8 bytes, but the IP address IPv4 is uh, 4 bytes, but the IPv6 is bigger. They wanted to create a unified general function to cover both. That's why they specified, like, uh, just say long, not integer. Uh, host ordered uh, IP address to network ordered IP address. And again, network ordered IP address to host ordered uh, IP address. Um, all right. Also, let's read this definition as well. Because of little big endian choice, we have to convert the port number short and IP address long using these methods for correcting byte sequence. Um, so this is the first example. Uh, in order to understand what is going on when we call these functions h2ons and h2onl first what we're doing is we're creating uh, short and long uh, variables we're giving values of one two three four in hexadecimal uh, why hexadecimal because if you specify zero x one two three four it will just uh, provide to the machine in binary like uh, this uh, let me just clear out so if you specify 0x1234 in binary format in bits what it will give is 0000, 0, 0, 0 oh my god how many 4 okay 4 4 okay 1 so in binary it will be like this and 2 will be like this and 3 will be like this um, my bad so here and then 4 will be like this so it will be easier to understand if you just look just 1, 2, 3, 4, that's why uh, if this one is swapped with the uh, if let's say after uh, calling the h2onl I'm, I'm talking about this function h2onl or h2ons the byte order could change for example this one could change to byte order could change to this it would become reverse and then if we try to print this value as here then what, you, what we would see is uh, 4 uh, 0 x 4 3 2 1 instead of 1 2 3 4 so this conversion in between could have happened because of h2 o and l if you do this it could become like this according to uh, the CPU so um, host ordered port number is this and you can see that the value is like this is the output after compiling and running this source file we will be having this output and on the output you can see that uh, the host order port is as we wrote here one two three four and network ordered port is uh, the converted version 
that is that, that is actually here net port that is being assigned uh, from h to o n s host address host port to host port address to network order port post address so now we have the network ordered port and then the network order port is actually reversed three four uh, one two. Actually, this is uh, I gave you a wrong, like bad example because the one two gives us just one byte. Um, th sorry for the confusion. Actually, the size will be just two bytes, not uh, four bytes. I gave I gave four bytes. I wanted to explain the uh, IP address, but here the first one is uh, not IP address. The first one is uh, the port number. Here, uh, one two is one byte, and three four is one byte. Here, what that means is uh, it would be zero 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 one and zero zero one zero. That gives us one here. Uh, this this one would give us one, and this one give, would give us two, and this would be just one byte. And here, the continuation would be like uh, three three. That means one one. And then four would be would give us like zero one zero zero, and if you attach it, so now we have two bytes, and after calling h two o and s, and providing this value as we gave here, the output would be reversed. The bytes bytes order will be reversed. So this byte would have been here, and this byte would have been here, and then if you convert it back, what we will be seeing is. The first byte is 3, the second one is 4, and then this one is 1, and this one is 2. 3, 4, 1, 2, and it. as you can see in the output, it's 3, 4, 1, 2. And when we ran it, the uh, H2ONS converted that uh, human readable uh, number to a network ordered number. So now the uh, byte orders are changed different according to the CPU. And the H2ONL could, uh, does the same thing as H2ONS, but on the bigger number. That is like uh, how many bytes? One, two, three, okay. One byte, two bytes, three, four, four bytes. Okay, so there are four bytes. Uh, this was actually the port example. First, I, uh, why I confused you a little bit because I start with IP address. I should have started with port number. So this is actually a port number example, and here I will give the IP address example. Inside the IP address example, the value will be a little bit bigger than this one, as, as here. 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so here, just like exactly the same example as here. And if you... Oh my god, it's going to take a year. Um, Alright. So, uh, let's just not convert into binary. Let's just convert... Um, like simply hexadecimals. So uh, the first byte would be 1, 2, the second byte is 3, 4, the third byte is uh, 5, 6, and then the last byte is 7, 8. And then after calling H, uh, 2, O, N, L, and then providing this value to this function, the output would be, um, okay, 7, 8 is the first, 7, 8, and 5, 6, the second, uh, one before the last byte is 5, 6, the previous one is 3, 4, and then the first one is 1, 2. Now the output is 0, x, 7, 8, 5, 6, 3, 4, and 1, 2, and if we convert, if you check it, it's exactly matching 7, 8, 5, 6, 3, 4, and 1, 2. So now we understand what is happening, what is going on when we call H2 O and L. What it's doing is it's changing the byte order uh, that can be read by uh, the CPU. The CPU will understand uh, this byte order as this. And we can, as, as humans, we don't understand this. When, when, when uh, someone tells us, read this value, we will not say, oh, this value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, we will say 7, 8, 5, 6. And the CPU, when you give this value to CPU, CPU will read it like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, so it's like a little conversion so that the CPU could understand us. And exactly uh, in this sequence, if you want to understand the port, uh, the IP address of this one, then you'll have to convert it back from network ordered. Uh, this was actually network ordered. 
and this one is host order and if you want to read it back then you have to say h2o and l oh, sorry n2oh network order to host order and give this value and now the output would be again this this will change back to here and now we can read this value as one two three four five six and this will be correct all right so now that we know how uh, these functions are working let's take a look at the source code and compile and run and see ourselves uh, okay so this example is ndn conv oh my god why don't we have that All right, this is another example. All right, we don't have um, that source file, but uh, let's just write that source file. Let's not waste time. So, NDN, let's say. The NDN will be containing uh, exactly the same uh, values as here unsigned short uh, host port which will have 0x1234 and then exactly like this we will have uh, a variable for network port but it will not be containing any value and then we will have um, it was just yes network port and then we will have long two longs for host address and here too address now when we call h2 to on uh, s uh, and provide this value host port it would convert that uh, host ordered uh, port to network order and now we have what we have to do is we have to load that value into network And then inside net address, we have to say h2o and l uh, host host address. Now we have to print it exactly like here. Um, okay. Print format. Okay. Oh my god, it's gonna say here. Okay, host port host host order port is number x and backslash n okay and this one is host port and exactly like this four more lines but this one will be network order and this one will be host ordered address and this one will be the network order address so first we're printing the host order port and then network order port and then we are printing out a host order address and then printing out the network order address so the values will be different this one will be network port and this one will be host address this one will be the net uh, yeah, it's all different this one will be network address so seems correct i hope i didn't make any stupid mistakes okay let's just copy the source file and try to compile and run it for that we have to copy it inside the c drive CYG win folder home and your username go in and copy and paste that in the end C file here and then open up the CYG win terminal okay and try to compile and run using the this command gcc uh, dash o uh, okay dash o ndn ndn dot c and oh actually this command is just exactly the same as gcc ndn dot c and then o ndn it's exactly the same just like the order of input and output changed and when you compile it you'll have the executable file and now let's try to run this ndn we'll see that uh, the host order port is 0x1234 and network order port is 0x3412 just like we said, uh, I believe it's inside the notepad++ yes, this port example 
exactly like uh, here. One, two, three, four was changed into three, four, one, two. Okay, three, four, one, two. And the host ordered address. Oh my god, I gave a different value here, I think. Just a moment. Um, H2ONL, okay, unsigned long, host, okay, here. Five, six, seven, eight. I apologize for the inconvenience, I just forgot that. Things happen. GCC, uh, okay. All right. Now we can see that the IP address part is uh, 12345 uh, until 8 was changed back to 7856 just like uh, here. And now let's add uh, the last part as well. Uh, so let's convert this one back to a host readable address and then print that one as well just for addition. Just for an addition. And by the way, uh, if you're interested in uh, socket programming then what you could do is just take the source codes and play with them try to change the source code lines yourself as well and try to understand more so uh, we just use two functions right just converting the host readable address into network readable address so now let's just convert it back let's say unsigned uh, long reversed oh no not reverse let's say host address uh, Okay, host address two, let's say, and that one will give a uh, give us the n2h long, and will specify the network address that we converted instead of host address. So now we're converting this value back to the host address, and let's print that out as well. Print line. Uh, I will just separate uh, the line with the end line so that we can see like it's just an extra thing that we added. Uh, convert okay host address after converting back that one will be the uh, number x and a new line and the value is the host address 2 okay now let's can uh, compile that file and run it and see the output for ourselves so we just modified this ndn.c file let's compile it done oh my god <laughs> One implicit declaration of function print. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I apologize for this. Uh, I usually write the code in Python and Java, and in Java it's print line. Print f. It was print f. Sorry, sorry. All right. I hope I didn't scare you off. <laughs> so now the uh, value that we just converted back from the network ordered gives us exactly matching value as uh, the host ordered uh, initial address that we gave that makes uh, this slide uh, to be completed now we can move on to uh, the next step the next step is actually uh, giving actually giving the IP address that we've just played with to a socket and see the example uh, and see it in real practice and um, there is uh, a flag that, that's called in add or any. Uh, whenever you're creating a TCP server, you can give that flag instead of specifying an IP address, instead of giving a value to it, you will just say in add or any. And uh, that would uh, listen to any IP address. So you remember there were uh, steps uh, where you created a socket, then bound it to an address, and then listened and accepted clients but when you are binding that TCP server to a socket and trying to listen to uh, other clients to connect to you don't know their IP addresses that's why you have to say I want to listen to any IP address any any uh, device that wants to connect to me and uh, at the beginning the server has to specify and the server has to say in or any when specifying the uh, the socket address inside the synadder field all right, so uh, now you can see that uh, it's not quite diff difficult to uh, create uh, the address and give it to a socket. Here, uh, we are just taking an object from the socket or in structure and saying it's an ad uh, giving it a name adder. And then we are just loading the port number as a string here, 9190, and that is converted back to uh, 
I don't know, this is unnecessary, it's just giving us a string. We can just give a number to H2ONS and say 9190 here, and that will be converted to a network ordered uh, port and assigned to the send port field. And the IP address is uh, specified here, and then converted back to H2ONL, uh, converted to the network ordered version using the H2ONL function call and assigned to the field of the sin adder that's called s adder and then we have to specify the sin family that's al almost always afi net so you don't have to worry about it uh, but before all this you have to just clear out the address uh, by saying uh, mem set this address set all uh, bytes to zero that will clear out the uh, structures uh, structure objects memory area so that's actually it, uh, I believe, I hope we have the source file now, that is very weird that we didn't have the uh, ndn.c file. Okay, but let's come back to the source codes and try to take a look at the other uh, codes. Okay, so, so there is n2oa as well. All right, all right, so now, we, well, now what we have to do is we have to... Uh, print out what is the IP address that is hiding behind this value. Maybe you had that question from the beginning, but you couldn't ask a question because it's a video, of course. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. Um, so uh, let's try to print out what is the IP address uh, behind this value. For that, what we're doing inside this uh, inet n2oa source code, this inet n2oa source code, uh, oh, sorry, let's start from A2ON instead of this one. INET A2ON.c file. Here we are converting the human readable IP address from string into a network uh, ordered address using this function called, called INET A2ON. That means convert this internet address to a network address, that, that means the network ordered address from a uh, string. So the address uh, will be uh, specified with a string, not a number, not like here uh, in the notepad example. Oh, okay, notepad is here. In the notepad example, we were giving uh, like this uh, decimal number uh, to this function h 2 l and it was returning a number that is readable by computers devices but we can't know the IP address in a decimal uh, the decimal value of the IP address just like that we, we can but we can know the dotted decimal notation that's why we have to use uh, this function mostly and when you call this init a 2 n a 2 o n it will convert this address uh, into a network ordered uh, number and uh, assign that to this CIN adder uh, memory area because we're giving out because we're giving the address of uh, that field and then if uh, the number this number cannot be converted into an IP address because it, uh, it can be an invalid value uh, for example we could have specified 256 or 257 which is not a valid IP address, it cannot be above 255, it's the maximum one. And for example, we, if we give uh, an invalid IP address here, then it will end up uh, having an error exception. And we will be ending up here, it, because it's an invalid value. And if it is a valid IP address like this one, 127, 232, 124, 79, which is a valid IP address, uh, we will have uh, this text printed out. Network ordered integer address is this value which is the result of conversion from a string into a network ordered address. Okay so now let's try to compile the source file and see what is the decimal value, what is the um, four byte uh, decimal number that represent that could represent this uh, IP address. For that we have to copy this inet a2onc file into the Okay, I don't want to repeat it again. I think you already know it's the CIG folder home, Kevin. Just delete this, paste it, and compile. 
just like before. GCC, uh, INET A2ONS, uh, blah, blah, blah. O, uh, let's say INET A2ON. Let's run it now. When we run it, it said that it was a valid IP address and the number that could represent the value is 0x4f. Remember, it's an hexadecimal value and hexadecimal values can contain f and c and e. Um, because, the, for example, uh, f represents 15, I believe. So, this is a number that represents this IP address. And now, if you give 255 everywhere, what you will be seeing is just f's. Everywhere, just f's. Here. Oh, think I think I, I'm compiling a different file because I just copied and just changed the file. So, okay, so, so now modifying this file and setting all fields to 255 would result in the all f's, like here. All values are set to f because all those are 255, that's the maximum value for IP address. Um, maximum value for each octet of an IP address. Now let's try to give 256 to one of the fields and see what happens. Now if you try to compile the same file and run, what you'll see is a conversion error text, which is a result of this if checking. And the address was invalid. <coughs> Okay, it's difficult to speak for 15 minutes. It's really difficult. Okay, um, whatever value there was. Oh, by the way, the most common IP address 127.001. I'm just interested in what is the output of this. So, one, 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 one. So, this is, this is what you're going to be seeing very commonly. Because this is the uh, this is the IP address of uh, any device itself, uh, relative to itself. <laughs> so if a device wants to talk to itself, then it has to send a text to uh, uh, send a text send a map packet to this destination IP address. Um, all right. So now that we know how we can convert uh, I human readable IP addresses into uh, network ordered uh, addresses. Now let's convert the network ordered uh, IP addresses to human readable IP addresses. For that, I just lost my source code. Okay, it's here. Uh, for that, we will be using N2OA example. Here, what we're doing is we are taking uh, a just value, like let's, let's say this was the result of the network ordered uh, IP address conversion and we are trying to convert this one back into a human readable dot to decimal notation by using this inet n2oa function call that would be converting back the uh, network ordered uh, decimal number into a human readable string and we are loading that string into this pointer just we're creating a pointer to that converted string and we're just printing out that value by uh, this function called like just printf dot to, uh, dot to decimal notation print this str pointer and str pointer is pointing to the human readable IP address all right um, let's try to compile and see what happens um, before compiling we have to copy that source file for compiling we have to copy the n2oa source file, just copy it and paste it. I'm repeating it again. Okay, so just paste it here and compile that source file. Uh, gcc inet n2oa.c output inet n2oa. Okay, now just to run it. When you run it, you will see that the uh, dot to decimal notation is one, two, three, four, and the second one is one, one, one. The third one is one, two, three, four. Because if you notice, the values are one. The first byte is one. The second byte is two. The third one, uh, okay, one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte. They just didn't put zero. It's, it doesn't make any difference. That's why. Anyway, the next value will be zero. That's why. 
and this one as well it was just one 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 the values of each byte uh, if of each octets were just ones that's why we're getting all ones and uh, okay I'm just modifying this file and what is the third element let's see it's just duplicate printing let's just remove this one it's just duplicate and um, let's add one more uh, address and then try to print out like our custom IP address. Um, let's say uh, the S address of the, uh, oh, let's just create another one, struct. So uh, I'm gonna show you an example of how you can play with the source files. You can do the exact same way that I'm doing. For example, we just studied this source file, right? I just explained to the source files. You can just take and just extend that source code and write custom code and try to compile and run and see the output yourself just to validate that you understood everything correctly. So let's create another uh, structure, another object from structure. Uh, sorry for uh, referring to these elements as objects because C is not an object-oriented language, so it doesn't support objects, it's just variables. Let's create a variable from that structure uh, and call it socket, uh, okay, soc adder in and say uh, my adder. That's, that will be a different address, like just a new address. Oh, oh let's call it just a new address. And uh, provide a value to it by saying uh, new adder dot sin adder dot s adder will be the h2o, uh, okay, h2o and l. So now uh, let's provide like custom values. For example, what would be a human readable value? Okay, let's say just nine. Okay, let's let's try to make it like nine, eight, seven, six, or six, seven, eight, nine. One of them. So zero x uh, nine would be like just zero nine, oh, zero nine, zero eight, zero seven, zero six. Okay, first byte, second byte, third byte, fourth byte. All right. About that will be the order will be changed. Uh, All right. Okay, one zero. Okay, let's try to compile and see what happens here. Okay, str pointer will be inet n two o a the new address the new address sin address. So this will be converting it into a string, and then. Uh, str array and then we are printing out when and why we're doing this it doesn't just like it's not necessary printf and say uh, a new address is a new adder is this value and let's just separate it out that just to show that it's just our custom new address and then say str pointer. Okay. Now clear out and compile the source file and run it. So now we have 9876. And now if you just convert it into uh, 6789, what you'd have is the reverse 6789. So um, that is it, and so we can just confirm that we have understood how the uh, internet addresses are working in uh, the socket programming, and hopefully it wasn't very difficult to understand. Uh, the next steps are just uh, creating and just passing that into the socket binding, and uh, here let's try to understand what is this example or am I missing on the okay let's go compile play. okay I actually just compiled and played with the source file so um, this source file is creating two addresses and converting back into the network order address and checking if it's an error oh all right okay it's just conversion of uh, the address by using the inet address. It's just the same example as the previous ones. 
let's compile this one as well and see what is the equivalent uh, network ordered addresses for these dot decimal uh, dot to decimal notations so for that we have to copy the inet address into this folder again and compile it in sorry, GCC inet address and say o and provide inet address and now we have to run internet address so uh, as you can see the first uh, value was compiled successfully the first address was compiled successfully but the second address was not compiled successfully I, I will give you a little bit of time so you can pause the video and then uh, try to find what is the issue here um, I hope you found the issue the issue is the last octet the value is 256 and it is an invalid IP address that's why it, uh, the init adder uh, function could not convert that uh, dot to decimal notation into a uh, just converted uh, decimal number that is why we have this uh, error occurred line printed out and the converted address value was equal to in adder none if the conversion of the address fails then the value that this function is going to be returning will be in adder any in adder none so uh, so there are a couple of ways to convert dot to decimal notation into a network ordered or host ordered uh, numbers first of all uh, first of which is this one and the next one is n2oa uh, function as you remember instead of this it was n2oa um, so I hope uh, it wasn't very complex and hopefully uh, this corona case will uh, stay more stabilized and we can have classes and meet in person I hope to see you soon good luck